Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. Now for today's video, we've got a brand new image from the set of Jurassic World Dominion to talk about, which not only features the return of a legacy character, Colin Trevorrow's thoughts on a specific scene, but also a clever Easter egg to yet another Steven Spielberg movie. There's a whole lot of cool stuff I want to go over here, and I've got an hour-long interview with a paleontologist to edit for you guys on T-Rex, so let's just go ahead, jump into it, and begin. <laughs> So just a few hours ago, Empire released this photo on their website, featuring a write-up where Colin Trevorrow talks about his experience with the shutdown for Jurassic World Dominion and how that affected everyone on set. But basically what we've got in this picture is Chris Pratt returning as Owen Grady, and I'm really liking the way he looks right here in this image too. They appear to be in Malta, where they shot a lot of stuff that apparently features those animatronic compies that looks like they're being on sale or something, I don't know. But we've also got Colin Trevorrow giving both Chris and Omar Sy direction here, which is really cool to see because with the return of Barry, the character that we haven't seen since 2015's Jurassic World being imminent in Dominion, I know a lot of people are really going to like the relationship that the both of them have and have had on screen return for the new film. You know, Barry was actually one of the guys that helped Owen Grady raise the raptors. He's one of the dudes that knew these things couldn't be controlled or contained and was actually very scared whenever something crazy would happen, but he was also super cool. He was really reliable when it came to interacting with dinosaurs like Delta and Blue, and he could handle himself. I love that scene where he's in the log and Blue's trying to kill him. He's just screaming at this dinosaur coming to get him like he's gonna shoot her in the head with the... It's awesome. But anyways, one of the really, really cool parts of this whole image right here that is kind of going unseen or not really talked about happens to be the boat. And if you didn't know, they are on a boat. And on that boat, you've got a couple of these yellow buoys, you've got a really old looking design, but probably the coolest thing right here is actually the name of the boat on the side, which is Fair Spanish Lady. Now, you guys might not know this, but I'm actually a really, really big Jaws fan. Just the first Jaws, not the other ones. But when it comes to Jaws, the phrase Fair Spanish Lady should be pretty familiar to you. Farewell and adieu to you fair Spanish ladies. Farewell and adieu, ladies of Spain, for we've received orders for to sail back to Boston, and so never more shall we see you again. Now, I don't know if there's any significance with them adding it on the side of this boat outside of a clever reference. Fun fact, this is the second time Jaws has been directly referenced in a Jurassic Park movie, not counting the shark getting eaten by the Mosasaurus in Jurassic World, but there's also a scene in the original Jurassic Park where Dennis Nedry actually had Jaws playing on his computer screen while he's having that conversation with John Hammond. So it's pretty cool that they've added yet another one of those little references here, but does it mean anything like this is going to be these two's last ride before they get killed or something? Look, man, I don't think that we can think too much into it, but it is pretty cool. Now, with that being said, Said, the interview that came along with this that Colin Trevorrow gave was, was pretty cool, and he goes into detail on how a lot of the energy was on set while they were filming a specific scene, and how even though they were faced with a lot of adversity and the pandemic shutting them down, they didn't let that really ruin anything. To sum everything up, Colin Trevorrow said the following, On the very last day we were shooting, I didn't find out officially that we were going to be shut down until about three hours before we wrapped. We were shooting in this old industrial barn. The producers, Alexandra Derbyshire and Pat Crowley and I had a phone call with Universal, and all of us agreed it was the right thing to do, but I still had a shoot day to finish. Empire then goes on to say that they would of course make allowances to ensure everyone was kept safe, but with no indication of when filming might resume, Team Jurassic was determined to get the scene in the can. Colin went on to say, whispers had begun, but we didn't want to compromise that moment in the movie by having it fraught in any way. So we captured it, and then we went home for three months, and that day is in the movie. We didn't go back, and we didn't reshoot it. Now, of course, shooting would resume later on in July, but as it became quickly apparent that COVID wouldn't go away anytime soon. And Trevorrow later went on to say that the scariest moment was in late October when we just had a couple of weeks left and the cases were rising exponentially. Because we had the crew that we did and the actors were always on set, we were able to accelerate what we were doing, but we definitely had a fear that we might have a movie that was nine-tenths finished and 
remain that way, which, wow, that would have been a very Jurassic Park 3 level situation, which if you didn't know, JP3 was fraught with a lot of production issues, a lot of rewrites. They didn't even have a script when they were filming the movie. This wasn't like that, but it was still production issues to say the least. Although I might relate this more to Jurassic Park 1's production problems when Hurricane Iniki hit Hawaii, but hey, that's just me. Now, with all of that being said, there's no real dinosaurs in this picture, just a little bit of a glimpse of what we can expect to see. A new outfit for Owen Grady, the return of Barry, who I'm guessing will be talking with Owen an awful lot about raptors and raptor wrangling in the film, or maybe he's just coming on for like good measure as a lot of the other legacy cast, you know, to reunite everybody in a big way. It was really cool that they decided to bring him back in Dominion because not seeing him in Fallen Kingdom was a bit disappointing for me. I mean, can you imagine if Barry had been with Franklin and Zia, or maybe it was just Barry with Claire when they were doing the stuff in the bunker, or maybe when they were doing stuff outside. It just seems like he should have returned in some way. I know that originally they wanted Lowry to be in Jurassic World going along with Owen and Claire to the island. I'm sorry, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. But, you know, things change, rewrites happen, and additional things get put into the pot. The cool thing about Barry being back, though, is I can remember early on when the decision was made to, like, start plotting out Jurassic World 2 or Jurassic Park 5, whatever you want to call it, Colin said that he had a lot of ideas for Owen and Barry and that it would be pretty cool to see them work off of each other. And I remember at the time a lot of fans were equating it to something like Alan Grant and Michael Wolfskin from, if you don't know this, you should, Jurassic Park 2, The Chaos Continues, which was the Super Nintendo game that had Biosyn going back to the island and catching dinosaurs before uh, all this other stuff happens. There's a volcano in that too, as well as the 1994 Jurassic Park arcade game where they go back to catch dinosaurs. You can see a lot of where this stuff comes from. The Jurassic World trilogy truly did did channel a lot of 1990s expanded material into the new films but all in all what we've got here is a clever easter egg to jaws hope we see a lot of that in the new movie uh, a cool new look at owen and barry and a little bit of inside information on what was going on before the shutdown i do wonder what that scene happened to be because trevorrow talks about it like it's an important scene that he didn't want to jeopardize so i wonder if it had something to do with character interaction maybe not so much dinosaur action or suspense but maybe it was a revelation or two characters working off of each other for some sort of specific arc. It's hard to say, but looking at this right here, this is probably set around the same area that we see the compies in that little cage, maybe even the Lystrosaurus. Hard to tell, but something with dinosaurs is probably going on somewhere in the background. Anyways, guys, those are all just my own thoughts on the subject matter, and I'd love to hear what all of you think. What are your thoughts and opinions on the return of Barry for Jurassic World Dominion? What do you think about the Jaws reference? And by the way, what scene do you think Colin Trevorrow was talking about? I think Owen Grady's looking pretty cool here. It's cool that they've given him his own unique look like each movie so that he isn't like a Doug Funny character in a film and wears the same thing every entry like Vin Diesel and Fast and Furious or Wolverine. Both of them wear wife beaters. I just now realized that. But anyways, whatever your own opinions happen to be, I'd love to hear them in the comments down below. Now before I go, I'd like to thank all of my game wardens, as well as all of my in-gen executives. I'd also like to thank all of my parkers and in-gen hunters as well. Guys, it seriously means the world to me that you all continue to support what I do, and I never want you to ever forget that. Now, I'd like to thank you all for watching today's video and hope you all enjoyed the content. If you feel like I deserve it, I'd appreciate the like and hope that you'll consider subscribing if you're interested in seeing me again. See you all in the next video, guys, and as always, take it easy.